everyone and welcome back to Clan Generator. Last time, after much struggle and strife, Savannah Clan has finally had a glimmer of hope here, with Downey Branch arriving into our clan. They're a new arrival and their background is a refugee, so that's interesting. But the rules do state that all new arrivals must go out by themselves or with one other clanmate in order to prove themselves on patrol. So we're going to go ahead and have Downey Branch do that. It looks like the only one they could go out on patrol with is the medicine cat. I don't really know if that is actually less dangerous or more dangerous. It feels kind of like cheating if it's less dangerous. But, oh well, we'll just see what happens here. Leopard Eye has attended to one of their grimier jobs as a medicine cat. The grounds where Savannah Glen goes to mourn their dead need to be tended. Oh my goodness. Well, this would definitely prove your dedication to the clan. <laughs> Alright, we have to proceed. Oh no, Leopard Eye turns around to see Downy Branch holding one of their paws off the ground. It seems they stepped on a thorn. It would be more likely you stepped on a sharp bone, <laughs> but okay. Yikes. Well, they got a thorn in their paw. Does that count as a failure? I mean, it's technically an injury. I've got to consult. Hold on. Well, it says get hurt due to some fault of their own, so I think Downy Branch is safe here. Well, this is exciting. Tumbleheart finds a kitty pet named Princess who wants to join the clan, and they change their name to Brindlepaw and join. Um, how was Quailstar picked up by an eagle? Like, she's completely grown. That makes zero sense. That was one big eagle. I guess she is an elder, so I guess the game thinks she's weak enough, but still, how does that eagle manage to lift all that? Maybe she's really skinny, who knows. <laughs> Alright. So, Weedier got a scar, but at least their injury is healed. And the thorn has been pulled out. Leopard Eye is doing a great job, as always. But one of our kittens has a running nose. Well, that's not good. Ooh, we have some drama happening over here. So, Tumbleheart's frustrated Weedier's won't take their duties more seriously. That's... that's fair. <laughs> And Quailster accuses Featherbracken of being a bad deputy. I guess nobody can replace Talonhorse. She's thinking that she's not doing as good a job, but Featherbracken is trying their best. And then in response, Featherbracken's just like, you know, your food looks better than my food. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a, what a, what a scaled-down response. But that's probably... Um, yeah, that's probably changing the way Featherbracken looks at Quailstar, so that's not good. And Weed Ears is bickering about something trivial with the deputy. Wow. So a lot of negative stuff, also some good stuff. Aw, the kids are grooming. And then and then they're just jealous that their sibling is always winning. Wow. <laughs> that is classic sibling rivalry. So I just rolled for our random event to happen, and I got a 59, which means that it's going to happen. And the random event in this case is a fire. So that's probably not what we need right now, but hopefully at least some will survive. So the way that this works is you roll for everyone each cat to see if they survive and I made it even more complicated by um, sorting it by age slash rank so it's gonna the numbers are gonna be a little bit different for each age group but we're gonna go ahead and roll through each of the cats I think maybe feather bracken wishes they had an extra set of paws yeah you might need one right about now being the deputy might be the first one to notice the fire and or maybe she's not maybe she's just sitting in camp organizing patrols and then somebody runs into camp telling her about this fire 
And I think since Weeders is guarding the camp entrance, she would be the first one to go and warn Feather Bracken that something weird is going on here. And these cats have probably never really seen a fire, or at least not one like this before. It's engulfing everything. Everything is up in smoke. The planes are up in smoke. The debris is falling, the burning debris out down into their camp. And there's probably some out on patrol, too, and they're probably going to get caught in this fire. So we're going to go ahead and see who all survives. We're going to start with Quailstar here because she's the first one in the list. And I think being an elder, I should roll for the elder category for her. And then being a leader, I don't want to just, if she rolls like a one or something, I don't want to just take away all of her lives. I feel like that's kind of unfair or OP. So I, f so I think I'll keep track of how many she has left on a separate document, and then once she runs out of the lives according to that, then she'll, then I'll, um, then she'll die. But other than that, I'm just gonna see how many she'll lose. I think I'll roll to see if I should roll again and then just keep rolling if I keep getting to roll again. I'll probably just do one and two as I don't and three as I do. So that's that for her. I got a one the first roll so she's lost one and I got a re-roll so I'm gonna roll again for her and I get a six. She rolled an injury that time. I gotta re-roll again. <laughs> and a four. So I think that's another death. I gotta re-roll again, but then I got an eight. So she will survive, but she's injured and has lost two lives. So yeah, that, that wasn't that great, but it wasn't the worst either. And having lost two of her lives, and with several of her clanmates probably being dead, she is of course dreading the meeting she must call. And we have Feather Bracken, I'm gonna roll for her. As an adult, Feather Bracken has a much better shot, and she rolled a 5, which for adults means she simply survives. So, that's a good thing. I guess the early warning helped her to retreat further into the camp. Here we have our medicine cat who was thinking about how awful kitty pet food must taste before this horrible fire happened. Hopefully that didn't distract her and she just, you know, burned thinking about this. Um, she is irreplaceable right now, so we definitely don't want to lose her. And we lost her. Oh, that is, that is awful. That is, wow, that, that is tragic. And. Apparently, you should not be thinking about <laughs> how awful uh, a certain food is while there's a fire blazing around you. This is a bad idea, people. Um, wow. I guess even if Pantherfur does return, she won't be there to greet him. Uh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh. Oh, I did it. Oh, that sucks. Okay, let's move on. I, I can't move on. Oh, I'm not in the... Hold on, I'm in the dead tab. I always forget to check on these guys. Chaffinch Bright is chattering at all the birds. That's, that is adorable. And Fitzbarren Slave with his name. And I, I also think Chaffinch Bright is probably uh, the father of some of the cats in the clan, or maybe the brother depending on his age. I don't know, we have a lot of black pelted cats. Downy Branch survives and knows they'll be picked to go to the next gathering. Um, I mean, that might not be the first thing on your mind if a fire is raging around you, but sure. Tumbleheart is daydreaming? That, um, kind of like Leopard Eye. That doesn't bode very well, but hopefully... The odds will prevail on this one and Tumbleheart will be fine. So Tumbleheart gets injured by the flames, probably scorched. Maybe she was out on patrol or something and unfortunately she gets caught in the fire. Or maybe she was just standing too near camp and she gets her, she gets pretty badly burned, but she does survive. Maybe even Leopard Eye was trying to help her and managed to save her and die herself. That's, that's 
heroic, but also sad. Maybe they were both a little unaware and just standing near the center, the front of camp, and then, and the burning things fall down, and, and there's not much effort I can do, except try and help her clanmate. And tragically, she doesn't make it, but Tumbleheart does. Weed Ears was the first cat to notice the fire, and she rushed in to tell the deputy, but let's just hope it was soon enough. Thanks to her swiftness and attentiveness at this particular day, Weed Ears manages not to get hurt. Next we have young Brindlepaw, who was just brought in this moon. Hopefully nothing happens to him. He got an 8, which means he's perfectly fine. And Talonhorse is our former deputy, now an elder. She's weaker than she used to be, but she's always been a fighter. F well, she escaped with just an injury from the flames. I imagine she probably tried to help the other cats a lot more than she probably should have given her age, but in, when the land's in danger, I'm sure she does her best to assist, and this time, it wasn't fatal. This one's gonna be the hardest, the two kits. I hope they make it. This one is staring off into space. That doesn't bode too well, but I'm sure he'll be fine. And we got a three. Uh, that's not too great. Oh. Uh, it is another death. Curlew Kit apparently staring off into space or being distracted by some manner is, like, fatal. <laughs> and there's a fire. <laughs> yeah. Who, would, who knew, right? And poor little Curlew Kit. I guess his mother just didn't get to him in time. Or maybe the nursery got got was close to the entrance and it all lit in, on fire somehow. Either way, he's gone. Ah! <laughs> They're both gone. I guess I am right. The whole nursery just lit up in flames. That is. I think these guys have a restructuring of their camp to do. Maybe that's what Talon Horse is working so busily on. Maybe she even feels guilty that she wasn't able to save them. I think she would definitely feel guilty about that. Oh man. I I think I think they all do. I mean Featherbracken feels like she should have done more as the deputy, Downy Branches, their mother. Weed Ears maybe feels like she didn't warn them in time, and Talon Horse just it feels awful because she tried as hard as she could, but she's just not as fast on her feet as she used to be. And of course, Quail Star. Who knows that she doesn't have much time left to watch over her group of cats. This setback is devastating, devastating to all of them, but we must continue onward. Probably after a couple weeks of mourning and fixing up the camp, they're ready to go back out. They need to find out what's still out there after this terrible, strange occurrence. And I feel like, I know apprentice training isn't exactly the kind, uh, the type that fits for this, but I feel like Quailstar needs to make sure that the younger cats get the skills passed on to them. Maybe she feels like she failed in that regard before. So we're gonna go on a training patrol here. Maybe this is the same one that she came across before, so I think Quailstar... I don't know. In the event, in the tragedy that has happened, would she risk other members? of the clan, just to check out this new scent. The apprentice does need experience. I think we'll go for it. What the um, Oh, she did the same thing she did before. <laughs> she stuffed grasses and shrubs into the mouth of it. 
Uh, well, that's the smart way to go anyway. At least we got maybe a little experience from that. Yeah, do not proceed. No thanks, we're not pulling a panther fur here. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot, yeah, we need a medicine cat. I forgot leopard dye is gone. I can't believe she's gone. But I'm not sure what to do about it. We don't have hardly enough as it is, and we don't have the kits anymore, so... Maybe we should switch our current apprentice to a medicine cat? I don't know. But anyway, we have the vigils for leopard eye here. Oh, I net I wow, Tumbleheart is wailing. I really didn't know that they were that close. That's so sad. And Talon Horse is also very, very upset. Yes, Leopard Eye was indeed a special cat and her loss has cost us dearly, as now we have nobody. She was so skilled at what she did and so dedicated, and there's nobody else here to fill her place. And I feel like Quailstar would definitely say a few things, probably in those two weeks before they do the patrols, and they, they would all probably sometimes forget that she was gone. Feather Bracken had a huge argument with Tumbleheart. I feel like maybe her being deputy and this tragedy happening has taken quite a toll on her relationship. And I don't know. I don't know if it can make it. I, I don't know if any of these cats can stand to be around each other much longer with all of the sorrow now in their midst. It seemed like things were going better until fire. <laughs> That was always the danger that these cats had no idea about here. Just that it could strike at any time and take however many cats it did and leave very little in its wake. Oh my gosh, look at that. Feather Bracken just outright hates Quail Star now. I think that's because of the strain that her being deputy has put on the relationship. Like, but what? It is just a, such a strong hate. She also has a healthy dislike for Tumbleheart now, and yeah. I, she doesn't really dislike anyone else except a little bit weed ears. I mean, they're weed ears, so that's kind of expected. In Quail Star's uh, old age and grief and, and nearing death, she pretty much has grown to hate just about everybody that was, were original members. <laughs> she hates Feather Bracken as much as she has like for her. She also dislikes Panther Fur for some weird reason, even though he hasn't been here in like forever. She also hates Tumbleheart, and she dislikes even Talon Horse. And of course, everybody has a little bit of healthy dislike for Weed Ears, so. She even dislikes just the tiniest bit the new apprentice that's been here like, what, one month? So I think she def leadership has definitely taken a toll on her. And I don't know if she can do this anymore. Tumbleheart also has a healthy amount of dislike for Feather Bracken. And, and a little bit for Talon Horse, but she's a little grumpy now that she's an elder. <laughs> I like how Downy Branch knows almost no one. This is actually a thing. I could retire Quail Star, but I wonder what happens to their extra lives then. Do they just stay? But anyway, that's kind of irrelevant. I feel like she wouldn't do that. I feel like she wouldn't step down, but it might be what's best at this point. Still, we really don't have enough members for that. Everyone needs to be useful somehow. <laughs> I feel like this is what Feather Bracken would do. She has so much stress on her shoulders as the deputy now. And they have had their relationship being rocky for quite a while. Maybe it's time to give them both a break. In the aftermath of the fire, I think they're both recalculating what's important to them too. I don't know, like, 
it seemed rather sudden to begin with. Like, it never had a foundation. I'm doing it. Ah! Well. <sighs> we'll see what happens now. Also, just checking in on Panther for... I forgot about him for a little bit here. <laughs> I'm gonna do this patrol because I don't think Feather Bracken would want to be with Tumbleheart right now. And... I think... I think Quailstar wants the apprentice to learn. Good, we helped them out. What? <laughs> Why are there apprentices just coming in and killing us? <laughs> what? What? How? That is concerning. I guess we might be at war or something and I didn't know it. Okay, well now she's only got one left. Because she lost two to the fire and now another to this. Great. Also, I forgot a, a rule that says that injured cats from the fire cannot go on patrol for three moons. So yeah, Quailstar shouldn't have been able to, and then Tumbleheart shouldn't have been able to. I should really uh, read my own rules more often. Ah yes, look at all the negative effects. Oh, well there's somebody comforting somebody after a nightmare, so that's good. And Downy Branch is chatting with Town Horse about their day. And then more negative. Yay. Has been lead letting their deputy call the shots recently and is proud of their initiative. Wow, maybe Feather Brocken's response to the fire has actually impressed Quailstar. That's interesting. Also, I'm wondering if I could put in their backstory something, like just write something for myself. No, no I can't. Sad. I'm very sad. Because I would have kept track of whether they were injured in fires there. Looks like Feather Bracken is taking their job as deputy very seriously now, assigning cats to patrols. Maybe breaking up with their mate is exactly what she needed. And of course, Downy Branch is being Downy Branch. I mean, I think she would. I think she might be in grief. Hold on. No, she's just completely savage. Like she doesn't even care that her that her kits were killed like two months ago. <laughs> I think that's because she had like no relationship with them. That needs to be fixed. Cats that come into the clan as groups should have pre-existing relationships. I don't know, maybe it's already been added in a new version of development version. I should really check. Tumbleheart, you are now not allowed to go on patrols because injuries that I forgot about earlier. Sorry. And we are just regretting not go eating the bird. I would too. Brindlepaw has been training very hard recently. I notice. He's been doing good. Town horse is almost choked on their prey. Makes sense. Downy Branch, I think, will will uh, help the apprentice a little bit in their training. And Feather Bracken has to be the third cat because everyone else is injured to fire. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're wimps. Let's not. Let's not proceed. <laughs> so we're not proceeding. Alright, well that's good. Avoiding conflict. Maybe this is why they attacked. They just came up and like killed our leader because we don't do anything. I mean, it, according to the rules, if Featherbracken hadn't been on the patrol because she's wise, then we could have antagonized or maybe not proceed- or maybe proceeded to. Because Star Clan is bigger now, I'm going to visit it. Uh. Doesn't want to talk to Martin Drift? Why? It, Martin Drift has, like, never done anything. Of course, you were probably here just with Martin Drift for a long time, so, you know, maybe, maybe they annoy you. Hmm, she's comforting another star clan cat. Interesting. And Kurlika is sneezing. Perfect. And Potka is feeling down. Yeah, I would too. Should we continue without a medicine cat, or should we make Brindlepaw a medicine cat? Yeah, I'm going to continue without a medicine cat, which is a horrible idea, because there's been nothing to indicate I should make Brindlepaw a medicine cat, other than the fact we don't have one. Oh, Downy Branch has become overexerted and is feeling sore, and we have no medicine cat. Maybe I should have <laughs> done that. Wow, Talon Horse is scolding Quailstar. Maybe she's letting her know it's that she should stop? Moping that she should stop obsessing. Maybe she's letting her know she should Quailstar should rebuild that trust with their clanmates she once had. 
I think Talon Horse might be a good mediator, actually. Like, almost everyone likes her, and oh, Brindlepaw called Featherbreck in the wrong name. <laughs> I feel like since Brindlepaw is so new to this tight knit group of cats, that is understandable. Ah, uh, yes. Is predicting rainy weather based on their aching bones. That is probably the best elder <laughs> um, blurb that there is. I, I can make Town Horse a medicine cat. Elders can be medicine cats. Even if they weren't before. So part of me wants to do that, but she has no experience doing that. I'm going to put her to mediator. Yay! So here's the mediator eye company. Click on that. Ah yes, here we have Quailstar think rethinking their life choices, because Talon Horse is about to mediate <laughs> with Featherbracken, who is gossiping, which isn't the best. Hopefully not about Quailstar. <laughs> the game Talon Horse in third in the list now, so that's nice. I feel like this is the most important. No, we're not going to do that because there's nothing there. We're just going to try and make them not hate each other. Boom. Hey, platonic like increased and comfort increased, trust increased, respect increased, and dislike decreased. Nice. Danny Branch just obsesses over the gathering. Like, the day that their, their children died, they were obsessing over the gathering, and now they're <laughs> obsessing over it again. <laughs> I don't know. Downy Branch seems like a horrible mother. Okay, you want to go on hunting patrol, but this is the last month that you can't. So next moon you'll be able to do that. Meteors is pestered by flies. Bindlepaw was caught humming to themselves. Probably not appreciated seeing as we went through a horrible fire not too long ago, but you gotta get through life somehow, right? Aw, Pantherfur's wondering if we're searching. We are, I hope. But I did hear a former mate left to die because she's dead now. Uh, one of you guys in the comments said that you've never seen one of these lost cats come back. So that is kind of depressing. <sighs> Besides, it would be too late now. Maybe it's better if he remains lost. You're curious about other clans? Well, we aren't. We avoid them whenever possible. Um, Leopard eyes chattering at birds. Huh, I was thinking of giving advice to a medicine cat, but we don't have one. Interesting. And Pod gets feeling happy. Well, at least she's feeling, or he, sorry, feeling better. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't even know what gender you are. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I didn't usually look at that when they were alive. Prevent fading. Yes, please. There we go. We are preventing. But we're not going to prevent you. Uh, we, we can't. <laughs> I mean, hoping that this cat would fade. They look cool, but it's not that important to have them here anymore because we have actual cats that actually lived and died. But, oh well, you can stay, I guess. We don't usually do this, but I think I'm going to proceed to test the apprentice and see if they should become a medicine cat. Hopefully they don't die. Okay, well, he got a bite wound. I feel like this is the final sign we needed. Hopefully he doesn't die of his wounds the next turn. Uh, what happened? Did I not switch them to a medicine cat apprentice? Will... I gotta check on that. Wow. He's stunning. Look at him. And he wants nothing more than to live by the warrior code. I guess I didn't switch him to a medicine cat. And I don't think I will. He can't patrol. I hope he doesn't get infected. I don't think I'll switch him to a medicine cat because he wants to live by the warrior code and we also need him to make some kits. So I don't want to make him a medicine cat for that reason. Hopefully that won't cause 
trouble. Quailstar has made a solemn vow to protect their planets. Did she lose another life? She had four. She lost two in the fire. She lost another one. No, no, she has one left. Has a suggestion for the clan leader that they wish to present. Interesting. Could Featherbracken be asking Quailstar to retire? Wow, Talonars is negotiating trading herbs with their rival clan. We have no medicine camp, but I guess they're still useful. Downy Branch is sharpening. Downy Branch is sharpening their claws. Tumbleheart wants a mouse. Weedears is daydreaming. Aw, oh, Chaffinch Bright is hoping they will be remembered. That's true, if not. It's been a while since someone mentioned them in their blurb or otherwise. But I have prevented him from fading, so. Leopard Eyes exploring Star Clan. Well, you might as well make the most of it. Ooh, Kurokit, who almost made uh, Brindleheart into a medicine cat before is now looking to visit Weed Ears, and that fits with what I'm thinking too. Aww, and I guess Chaffage Bright doesn't have to worry about being forgotten because little Podkit is curious about them. That is so sweet. I feel like Weed Ears, who has been a warrior for a long time now, maybe he might have missed her calling. And I think with Curly Kit thinking about her, I'm gonna try something interesting here and switch to Medicine Cat, since we really do need one. Yeah, she has no current conditions, which makes her a better fit than Brindleheart. So we're gonna try this out. Um, this is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Tumbleheart comments to Downy Branches, where the troll stares at Savannah Clan's uninvited guests at our hunting grounds. Are they not gonna do anything about that? Thing. Wow, They're, it's probably two egg stuff. No, we're not going to do anything. We are going to leave. And with that, we are going to wrap up for today with the clan finally starting to recover, maybe, from that horrible tragedy of the fire. The danger, unbeknownst to them, that was lurking here in the savannah the whole time that has taken so many of their members and the kits and leopard eye those were really the ones we maybe couldn't afford to lose and now they're gone we have to move on they seem to have taken up their place in star clan helping to guide us but it's still going to be hard to not have them around and with the loss fresh in their mind the clan is going to continue onward in order to hopefully make this new place safer. Moving the nursery away, like Talon Horse was helping doing from the front, will pre hopefully prevent such tragedies like it catching on fire. And Featherbracken has finally decided that she's going to put her duties as deputy first and that her relationship just wasn't working out the way she thought it would. Quailstar is coming face to face with her own demise soon, and she's wondering what will happen to her clan when she's gone. And Weed Ears has stepped in to a position that she never thought she would have to fill. She thought Leopard Eye would be here forever. Maybe she's finally found her place in this clan. And with the arrival of Brindleheart, maybe we can finally have some kits born in this clan to cats of the clan, but we will have to see next time. I hope you guys will all subscribe and like this video so you can continue to follow the story of Savannah Clan. And... I will see you guys all next time. Goodbye.